Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is great. If a sperm is wasted, God gets quite irritated. Goes the song from Monty Python movie, The Meaning of Life. If the lyrics strike you as funny, it's most likely because calling a sperm cell sacred sounds ridiculous when men can produce so many of them. In fact, the average male will produce roughly 5 to 5 billion sperm cells over a lifetime and shed at least 1 billion of them per month. A healthy adult male can release between 40 million and 1.2 billion sperm cells in a single ejaculation. In contrast, women are born with an average 2 million egg follicles. The reproductive structure that gives rise to eggs by puberty, a major of those follicles close up and only about 450 will ever release mature eggs for fertilization. But if it only takes one sperm and one egg to meet and create a baby, then why do men produce such a whopping number of sperm? Wouldn't it be less wasteful for a man to release a single sperm or at least fewer to meet one egg? The reason for this predicament boils down to two words: sperm competition. Since the dawn of the sexes, males have vied with each other to get as many of their sperm near a fertile egg as possible. Getting more of your sperm closer to an egg means there is a greater probability that it will be you and not your neighbor fertilizing it. This kind of competition is an evolutionary imperative for male of any species. If a rival sperm fertilizes an egg, then an opportunity to pass on your gene is lost through many generation as the reproductive spoil continually go to the highest sperm producers their genes are passed on the genes of the smaller sperm producers are eventually weeded out of the population and becomes a footnote to evolutionary history but if it was just a matter of more is better then animal of all species would have evolved ridiculously large testicular in a bit to overwhelm the competition but not it's not quite that simple numbers are important but so it's proximity fertilizing an egg is not just in about how much sperm you can produce it is also about how close you get your sperm to it in the early 1980s researchers in the united kingdom and the united states realized that both proximity and numbers were important factors in the physiology of primates including humans In primate societies with rigid social structure and one dominant male who mate with all the females tested trend towards the small in gorillas for example they are very small relative to body weight in gorilla society one male defend of female to ensure only his sperm gets anywhere near their egg in this case making a lot of sperm doesn't really help the male gorilla get the job done For chimpanzees on the other hand sperm competition is a serious issue in chimpanzee society many males and females live together in a large group and female have sex with many male in a short span of time this is why male chimpanzee possess the largest testes of all the great ape weighing roughly 15 times larger than gorillas relatively to their body weight this gives them a better shot of swapping out the competition Human males fall somewhere in between gorillas and chimps. The average male, the average man testes are roughly 2 and a half times as big as gorilla but 6 times smaller than chimps. Relative to body weight, this has led some researcher to question whether sperm competition was ever at work in human societies or whether a relatively large test are just a hold over from an earlier period in an evolutionary history.